Please rise for the presentation of colors in our national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the Provost and Senior Vice President of Academic Affairs for Virginia Commonwealth University, Dr. Fotis Sotiropoulos. Good morning and welcome to Virginia Commonwealth University's commencement ceremony. Today, we celebrate VCU's class of 2022. Let's hear it for them. On behalf of President Michael Rao, 
the Board of Visitors and our faculty and staff, it is a pleasure to welcome you to this morning's commencement. Please join me in recognizing the VCU Police Honor Guard, our soloist Helena Ruiz Nuckels, and the VCU Commencement Band conducted by Terry Austin for leading us in the national anthem. Now, I will introduce those who share the platform with me today. I ask the members of the platform party to rise as you are recognized and remain standing. And please, kindly hold your applause until the end of the introductions. All members of the VCU Board of Visitors, all of our academic vice presidents and deans, VCU Alumni Council Chair Michelle Peace, our Faculty Senate President Valerie Robnold, our Student Government Association President Kamar Al Hassan, and our Grand Marshals Ellen Byrne and Umberto Fabello. Other members of the platform party will be recognized during the program. Will all the members of the platform party please rise? Now please join me in recognizing this wonderful group of people who have dedicated themselves to the success of our students, faculty and staff of Virginia Commonwealth University. Today, we are also joined by members of our outstanding faculty, including emeriti faculty. Would all the faculty please stand so we may thank you for the integral role you have played in transforming the lives of all our graduates. Let's hear it for our faculty. Thank you. We are also so pleased to be joined by three very special groups. Students and guests from our VCU Arts Campus in Doha, Qatar. Family and friends of our commencement honorees. Please join me in extending a warm welcome to these special groups. Yes. Thank you. Now it's my distinct pleasure to welcome the President of Virginia Commonwealth University, Dr. Michael Rao. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. This is one of the best times of your lives. It's such a great honor for me, for my family, for all of my colleagues here, our graduates, of course, and your happy families. It's such a pleasure for the Board of Visitors, the faculty, the provost, our dean staff, and so many others who have put this all together for us. It's so great. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to get together with you this morning to celebrate, really, what is the most momentous occasion that will be in your lives thus far. So I want to take a moment to talk about something that Provost Sotoropoulos talked about, and that is I want to take a moment to recognize the VCU director of bands, who's also a professor of music, my colleague Terry Austin. And the reason I want to recognize him, recognize him is because he's retiring after 35 years of service to VCU. That's a lifetime. And so, and, and, during that time, he's over here to my left, during that time he has never missed one commencement and always, always deserved such an outstanding performance at every one of them, certainly every one of the 13 that I've been with you on. Thank you so much, or maybe it's 26, right, because we do two of them in a year, but thank you so much. We are so grateful to you. So today we celebrate the most important milestone of your life thus far, your graduation from Virginia Commonwealth University. As students and members of the Ram family, you've worked so hard to get where you are today, 
and we are all extraordinarily proud of you. We've been talking about it all week. You're a unique class of graduates. You just think about the time that you've been here and the things that have happened. Your years have been a time of, let's just say, tremendous change and enormous challenge. But you have adapted and you have persisted, arguably unlike any other generation that we can think about. So I was looking at something earlier uh, this week, um, and it was by the scholar, diplomat, and Nobel laureate, so, who, whom some of you might have heard of, Ralph Bunch. And what he said specifically was quite interesting. He said, you can surmount the obstacles in your path if you're determined, courageous, and hardworking. Never be faint-hearted, be resolute, but never bitter. So to me, that was a really, really incredibly important quote because that's exactly what I see in all of you, the class of 2022. You have cleared so many obstacles and made ways to, to create your pathways forward. And you've done all of this with obstacles that we never imagined that you would face when you started. We have seen your courage. We've seen your hard work. You are, to me, as I've had a chance to talk with so many of you this year, I see tremendous determination and resolution. You're determined, you're resolute. And the other thing I really admire about so many of you is that you're true to who you are, and it's very clear that you're true to what you believe in. Most of all, I want to tell you that the grace and care that you've shown for each other has been a model for people everywhere to follow. I cannot begin to tell you nationally how many people recognized the behavioral tendencies that you had here at Virginia Commonwealth University through this pandemic. It was amazing. You modeled what the rest of the world really needed to do. You showed each other so much respect. We saw through this pandemic so many different human responses. And let's face it, some of them were good and brought the best out of people. And some of them were not so good and seemed to bring out what we might think of as the worst that people could bring at times. Maybe that was stress or maybe a lot of different reasons. But either way, other people were affected by everyone else's behavior. The VCU community, you, and I'm going to add my faculty colleagues and my staff colleagues throughout VCU, including our hospitals and clinics, they've shown us you've shown us the very, very best. You've helped us to envision and move toward what I envision VCU to be. We're not there yet, but we are really getting closer every day, and it's because of the number of you who have pushed us forward to be a truly public research university and health system. You've told us what it should look like. At every opportunity, you've told us that VCU has to be a place where all human beings, all people are embraced and cared for, and where all people can and do succeed. And now, the more than 4,000 of you who are graduating with undergraduate degrees, you're joining the more than one-third of the population of the people of this country who have earned a bachelor's degree. And by the way, you're now one of seven across the world who will have a bachelor's degree. I know we can count on you to take what you've learned here at VCU from our excellent faculty and from the many staff members with whom you've interacted as well who have taught you so much, and what you've learned from each other. You're going to take that out into the world, you're going to continue to grow, and you're going to be the very best version of yourselves because that's what it means to be a RAM. That's what it means to be a VCU graduate. I see it in our alumni all the time. I want to be clear that those of you who have earned master's degrees, doctoral degrees, professional degrees, more than 1,400 of you this spring, you're now a part of what is just 13% of the population in the United States to have specialized knowledge that will benefit you, but most importantly, will benefit so many other people. That's what we live for. 
So to all of you, whether you're graduating today with a bachelor's degree, the highest degree in your field, whether it's the MD degree, the DDS degree, the PhD degree, MFA degree, whatever it is, we are very, very grateful that VCU has been an important part of your education and realistically over the last many years, an important part of your life. But you have made VCU the important place that it is because VCU is nothing without people. We are people. We are not walls. We are not bricks. We are people. So as we celebrate one of the most important milestones of your lives this morning, today you're going to walk out ready to make the world and the human experience for all human beings so much better. We're counting on you for that, and we know we can count on you for that. There are so many pathways that are open to you now, so many opportunities coming your way. Great things are absolutely coming your way, and you should be excited about that. Remember, for you to see those great things that are coming your way, you have to believe in yourselves, and it's important for you to understand that believing in yourselves and having that confidence that should be in you from everything that you've invested here at VCU is so critical. So whatever you do next, do what your heart tells you to do. And don't worry so much about what other people want to try to tell you to do. And question their motives if it doesn't smell right, feel right, or in your intuition, which you have developed better while you have been here. If it doesn't feel right, it probably isn't. Go to your heart. Dig down into your soul. Do the things that are true to who you are and do good things that you believe in doing, that you know are the right things. And as you do these great, amazing things that you're going to do in the future, I know because your fellow alumni who are out there are doing them all the time, I will tell you, it gives me such deep faith that we can count on you to be leaders of good in this world, leaders of civility, leaders of professionalism, in all of the things that are not only good for you, but you know are so good for everybody else. That's one of the opportunities you have now that you're a graduate. You can go out there and change the world, and everyone's depending on you. Just everyone's depending on you. It's so important for you to understand that. Yes, we're celebrating you, but we're celebrating the fact that you're one of just seven people in the world with a degree. You have more of an ability to make a difference realistically than most other human beings out there. Lift your life and lift the lives of other people. You're joining a really important group. You're the leader in this world in whatever your discipline is, but you're leaders in your community, wherever community you become a part of. And you'll probably be a part of many different communities in your lives. People move around a lot these year, in, in these days. I know that you'll use your influence, your knowledge, and your skills to move this world and our people to better places, better than we've ever seen in our lives. That's what keeps me going. So when I'm in your energy space, I develop this energy and enthusiasm for life because I have such great faith in all of you. And I do because I've gotten to know so many of you. And it's been so wonderful to watch you grow and change. Some of you who I've known since you were freshmen, you've changed so much, you've become so confident. You're going to set the tone for our future as human beings. You'll create the future. You'll have power. And as a famous superhero said, with great power comes great responsibility. Our excitement and optimism for what comes next really comes from you. We know that you're going to use everything that you've learned at VCU to think critically, to be very thoughtful, to listen, make listening an important part of your communication skills, and to think critically. I'll say that again, to do what's right and to embrace other people with what you have embraced them with here, with respect, with empathy, and grace. And if you want to advance something that I talk about all the time at VCU, I tell you all the time, we have diversity. Look at you. We do not yet in this world have the kind of inclusion that we need. And that 
is something that will get better because of you. And we know that you will not forget who you are. Many of your parents and family members told you before you came, don't forget who you are. I'm telling you the same thing right now. We know you won't forget who you are. We know that you will stay true to who you are in your own hearts, no matter what happens. But I hope you remember these words because it'll be important to you. You don't want to turn around and be 90 years old and say, oh yeah, somebody said that in my lifetime. I should have stuck with my heart because my intuition is pretty good. It's good now. It isn't going to just be good when you're 90 years old. Because you're a ram, rams believe in good and make good things happen for themselves and most importantly for other people. Rams carry powerful, powerful positive energy that helps them to overcome any obstacle. You have already done that. The first pandemic in a lifetime and you have done it and you have done it beautifully. You have just been so successful. You're going to continue to do that. We're so happy to rejoice with you today. Many of us in this room, we feel a mixture of, of pride and relief and excitement. I know many of your families do. You'll also feel some nostalgia and just overwhelming gratitude that all of you are brilliant, energetic young people entering the next great phase of your lives. And we're all excited for you, and we're excited for ourselves because what you're going to do. So what I just finished saying to you is a lot of we's. And I have all of those feelings too, because as your president, I feel it for all of you. But I also feel it because our son, Miguel, is graduating here together with you. So Miguel, I don't know where you are. You're out there someplace. but. Mom and I are so proud of you, and we love you. So to, to all of the families, friends, and mentors who have supported all of the, our students, I want to say thank you to all of you. And graduates, I want you to join me in thanking all of the people who got you through to the place where you are, please. Families, the, the care that you have shown our students deserves to be celebrated. And I'm so grateful to all of you for being a support system at what was arguably one of the toughest times in all of our lives. And thank you for entrusting your graduate to us in these last few years. So VCU class of 2022, you're a beacon. You are lighting our path to the brightest and most exciting futures that we've ever imagined as human beings. We're so happy to celebrate with you and the great hope that you carry with you. You have such wonderful enthusiasm, such wonderful, rich visions of what the world can be and how to include us all in it. Thank you so much. Congratulations and go Rams! badly as I wanted to sit down and recover, I can't. Now, though, it is my absolute pleasure to introduce our student speaker, Samia Salim. She is graduating uh, with uh, her bachelor's degree in psychology and with a minor in chemistry. And uh, this is, of course, from the College of Humanities and Sciences, which is a source of great pride for us at the university, along with every other school in at the university. So she plans on pursuing her career in medicine and research. So um, I ask you to join me in welcoming Samia Salim, the 2022 student speaker. Thank you, Dr. Rao, for the wonderful introduction. Welcome, honored guests, respected faculty, family, friends, alumni, and of course, the class of 2022. It 
It's a great honor to address you graduates on a day marking one of the most important accomplishments of our life. It was a long road, but we've made it. Before I begin, I have some good and bad news. The good news is that after today, you will have the necessary tools, the courage, and the willpower to take onto the world. The bad news, however, is that in between now till your future adventures lies my speech. <laughs> now, let's take a moment to celebrate today. Take a moment and remember what today feels like. Think about all that you've been through to get to this day. Was it easy? Probably not. But what's the thing that got us through? Determination, perseverance, discipline. Oh, and of course, Quizlet. <laughs> One of the most daunting experiences we all went through together over the past few years was COVID. A time full of unknown challenges, fear, and constant adapting, but also a time of unity, support, and solidarity. After about two years of numerous challenges, both personal and academic, I cannot help but feel humbled and grateful to have made it this far. In the face of adversity, we were able to overcome these challenges. The past years, we have transformed personally and professionally. As we leave a minimum 17 years of schooling behind us, we are welcomed into a world of infinite possibility that lies ahead of us. Ahead of us are goals and aspirations that we someday hope to achieve. But how do we stay persistent enough to guarantee our own success? The truth is that none of us knows what is truly destined for us. But deep down inside, there's a voice that tells us to take the risk. There's a dream we see where we imagine ourselves living the best life possible. Today, I encourage you to hold on to that dream no matter how impossible it may seem. There may be times in your life where you feel like you might not make it, times that may challenge you beyond your limit. Those are the times that call for resiliency. If you feel like you may fail, remember that every day is a new day and an opportunity to try again. There's a quote that I used to love as a child and it said, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Take the first steps towards the rest of your life. Even if you take one step a day, in a year you'll be 365 steps ahead of where you started. Take the risk. Run on your highest days and walk on your lowest, but don't stop. Go towards that life that you idealize for yourself, five, 10, 20 years from today. Remember that there is no secret to success. Success is a story that includes learning, testing, and failing. But most importantly, you know you lived a successful life if it made you happy. I'd like to end by encouraging you to find your source of happiness, to live a life that fulfills your inner satisfaction, to be kind to yourself and to others. As you walk out today, cherish the moment, hug your loved ones, and celebrate this important milestone of your life with a big smile. Thank you. Thank you, Samia, and congratulations to you as well. It's a little different to celebrate up here than it would be down there, but we're grateful for your willingness to, to join us. <clears throat> Our next uh, honoree, um, who was to actually speak as our spring commencement ceremony, uh, at our sp spring commencement ceremony in 2020, <laughs> um, she is now, of course, going to be here in 2022. Um, it's my pleasure to finally introduce her. Her name is Charlotte Moss. So, <clears throat> she is a fellow VCU alum. 
She is internationally recognized as an interior designer, and she's a tremendous author. She has over 37 years of experience in the business of design. She's the author of 11 books. She's a dedicated philanthropist. She's the recipient of so many honors that I couldn't even start to list them. And she's on so many boards and councils that I couldn't list them. I had the honor and pleasure of being with her in New York in her home um, that just reeks of the success that <clears throat> she represents. Um, and we're so proud of you, so, so proud of you. And we had a chance to get to know each other. Um, we've tried this a couple of times, as a matter of fact, because we thought you'd come in 2020 until that thing got in the way. And then we moved on to uh, 2022, and I got to be with you a couple of weeks ago, and I enjoyed it so much. This is a person of tremendous depth and wisdom, a person who has also used that depth and wisdom and great intuitive ability, <clears throat> great sensibilities to become <clears throat> the truly international success that she is. I'm so proud of her and so pleased and honored to introduce to you our keynote speaker at commencement 2022 for the class of 2022, Charlotte Moss. <clears throat> Well, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you, President Rao, Rector Dendy, distinguished deans, faculty, staff, honorees, the parents that have gone the distance with each graduate here today, the grandparents that are taking pictures, and the siblings that are sitting there wondering, just how long are we going to be here? <laughs> it really does take a village, doesn't it? Thank you for inviting me here today. It is an honor that um, I really got a lump in my throat walking in in that procession um, earlier. But thank you for inviting me here to help you celebrate the most important day um, in your life um, and all the achievements that you have made that have paid the path to the seat that you're sitting in right now. I remember hearing someone use the phrase collective effervescence. It's such a good description of what I feel here today. The energy, the buzz, the excitement, the joy of all of us being here together in this room to be able to celebrate you, the class of 2022. Are you partied out yet? Are you just getting started? All right. Well, as one can imagine, in writing a commencement speech, you do a lot of soul searching, you do a lot of research, and needless to say, you write countless drafts. And even though I've written and edited, I don't know, 10, 13 books now, I still went back to the writing wisdom of others for some advice on how to write this speech. And I went to Ernest Hemingway, who said, in order to write, a, um, to write period, you had to write one true sentence. So I wrote one true sentence about writing this speech today, and here it is. Writing this speech made me lose sleep. It raised my anxiety level and filled me with self-doubt. I've taken it to over four different foreign countries, twice to the Bahamas, numerous trips to the West Coast, and also back here to Virginia, period. So there you have it my one very true run-on sentence. But today, as President Rao informed me three years ago, my job, as I understand it, is to impart some kernel of wisdom, some lesson that I've learned in my life thus far, which is pretty damn far, by the way. But everyone has their mantra, their set of beliefs. Maybe yours comes from a parent, a mentor, a role model, a book of philosophy or religion, or maybe it's on your Nike t-shirt that simply says, just do it. So in preparation for today, I've taken some time to look at what is reflected in my rearview mirror about my own mantra. One is a poem and the other is a proverb, but more on that in a minute. I am here because 49 years ago, I sat where you're sitting. 
As a member of the class of 1973, we heard Senator William Proxmire, the distinguished Democrat from Wisconsin, deliver our commencement address. 49 years ago. It's even hard for me to imagine that it's been that long. For you, that's several lifetimes. So I'm going to do something right now with my phone that is something Senator William Proxmire could not even imagine he could do, is to take a video of this class right now. So wave, shout. Thank you, thank you. I'll post it on Instagram today. <laughs> Something he also couldn't do. And he also didn't get a Google alert like I did this morning, telling me there are 11,802 seats in this room. And that 882 of you are receiving a degree as the first person in your family to do so. And there are 43 different countries represented in this room. Pretty amazing. But in those 49 years, a lot of things have changed. But one thing has certainly remained the same. People, you and me. We have all experienced this place, VCU. The heartbeat of the fan district and a critical part of the fabric of Richmond, Virginia. This place prepped us all for the future and gave us a new toolbox of skills. Little did you know that parallel parking would be one of them. <laughs> I was a commuter student like many of you and spent a huge chunk of time just looking for the bloody parking space. So now you must take that toolbox, parking skills and all, and remember this, Oz didn't give nothing to the Tin Man that he didn't already have. Remember those lyrics from America that he didn't already have? Well, now is the time to combine all that you have learned with what you already have, your passion, your drive, your discipline, and your willingness to work hard. You, all of you, have the opportunity to take what you have learned and accomplished and deliver that to the world through your chosen profession but more importantly, through your life. Scary, really scary. I thought so 49 years ago. But always lingering in the back of my mind was that poem and the proverb that I referenced earlier, words that gave me courage and became my guardian angels. So let me share a few very personal stories with you today, some important watersheds and moments in my life thus far. I was born and raised here in Richmond. I went to St. Bridget's for elementary school and middle school. And when we reached the seventh grade, we were separated by our grades, A, B, and C. Well, I was in the A class, at least at the start. But I was kicked out for not participating in the oral recitation of French class. The nun teaching that class rendered my tongue completely incapacitated. She scared the hell out of me, swinging those rosary beads, pacing up and down the classroom in that Darth Vader looking habit of black and navy. I was speechless. So they called my mother and told her, and off to the B class I went. But there I proceeded to make myself very, very unpopular because I did the extra credit question on all the tests and always got over 100. Well, I did come from the A class, right? I just couldn't pronounce my French. But it also didn't occur to me to do anything but my best. I was the oldest of five children, and my mother would say it was the burden of being the oldest of setting a good example. So some of the boys in my class harassed me and made fun of me. My teacher, Mother Juliana, was somehow aware of the harassment but could not catch them in the act. Then one day she held me back from class for a little chat and she gave me a bookmark. And on it was a poem and she made me read it to her. The title was Don't Quit. 
written by some enlightened, anonymous soul. I still have that poem. I will always remember Mother Juliana's kind face. After that day, I just carried on. With her support, that smile, that poem, I could never quit on Mother Juliana. But I was emboldened, and I never quit doing those extra credit questions either. But little did I know that that poem and the memory of Mother Juliana would become watchwords in my life. All of us have experienced challenges in the classroom, on the athletic field, and in other aspects of our life. And there are times when we have all been tempted to quit. And then we heard that inner voice that convinced us of the benefits of carrying on. I remember being on the swim team in my early teens. Backstroke was my favorite stroke, and I won a lot of swim meets. But I lost every darn time to one particular person in backstroke. My coach, of course, said, don't quit. And then I heard the echo of Mother Juliana. I never beat that other swimmer. Somehow it never really mattered because I knew that I'd given it all that I had. I know it's hard to imagine this, but Michael Jordan missed 9,000 shots in his career. And he lost almost 300 games. Unbelievable statistic when you think about it. He said, I've failed over and over again, but that's why I succeed. He said he could accept failure, but he couldn't accept not trying. So back to my rearview mirror. Then came time for college applications. I met with my guidance counselor, and I asked my parents if we could sit down one night and discuss college. I remember I talked for a while. I remember they said nothing. Then came the bomb. My father told me he had not planned on the girls going to college, and that statement hit me like a brick. There were five children in my family, three girls. My heart sank. I didn't understand. I'd worked so hard in high school just waiting for this moment. But I remember going to my room confused and crying. I tried to pretend that he didn't say that. I had to go to college, and I would just have to figure it out. Hello, my teleprompter is a little slow. <laughs> Thank you. Woo! Where are we? Okay. Okay. Thank you. So anyway, thank God for VCU. I decided to move out of my house and move in with my grandmother. My best friend came to the rescue with her car, and we loaded it up. My grandmother's house was on a bus line. My parents wasn't. How else was I going to get to class and eventually to my jobs? I didn't own a car. So I took a part-time job at Miller and Rhodes department store where I'd been on the teen council when I was in high school. In the summer, I taught swimming. And I can't remember exactly when I got the third job, working in the VCU admissions office at 920 West Franklin Street. I learned to juggle classes with working hours in between. There was little time to hang out in Schaefer Court or in the student center. And imagine this, that was decades before Starbucks hit campus. <laughs> Months went by and my parents came to my grandmother's to ask me to please move back home. They made the down payment on a VW Beetle and I made the monthly payments. I learned where to buy the cheapest gas in Richmond, a place way out on West Broad Street. I remember that car so well because I made chintz slipcovers for the front seats. It was a floral print. It was blue and green and lilac. I can see it now. I think maybe that was a clue that I might have a career in interior decorating, but who knows. So for the next two and a half years, I commuted to VCU, living in a house with four siblings, and it wasn't easy. My senior year, I moved into an apartment on Grove Avenue with three girls, and I remember my share of the rent was $40. Okay, so I just dated myself. You've already done the math, so it's okay. <laughs> With car payments and rent, there was little left. All I could say was thank goodness for home ec, because it taught me how to make a dress 
and put in a zipper, and I got really good at it. But I have to admit, my path at VCU was a little bit like a winding road. Truth be told, I wanted to apply to the School of the Arts for interior decoration, but I chickened out. I was too insecure to complete the portfolio requirement. I knew the competition would be stiff, and besides, I couldn't even draw a stick. So I kept the portfolio, portfolio on my desk until the very last moment. And then I said, well, what about being a biologist? I'd always been fascinated with science. I won the science fair in the ninth grade for biology. And as a child, I was always the one that loved exploring the woods and collecting tadpoles so we could watch them grow into frogs. I've kept on exploring, but now it's the world and tadpoles have been elevated to art. But after I started down the biology path, I realized I had to take a lot of chemistry and physics. And I thought, oh, damn, that is not for me. <laughs> so after a year of flapping around, which included academic probation, I had a big chat with self. I love to read and write, so why not major in English? Maybe I could teach. Well, my degree was in English, but I never saw a classroom. Now fast forward, my career has included insurance underwriting, at least the fun part, vintage cars, jewelry, antiques, and then a spell on Wall Street, a period in my life where a mentorship made my career tolerable amidst the rampant discrimination and harassment. And as frustrated as I would get sometimes, I heard that same refrain from my boss, my mentor, don't quit. Until there came a moment when the stars lined up and I was ready to go out on my own and leave Wall Street behind. My firm was merged with another and there could not have been a better time to jump ship. So that proverb that I referenced earlier, well, it was about to be put to the royal test. It was leap and the net will appear. This was the first time in my life when quitting felt validated. I was encouraged. It felt right, just right. Jumping ship did not feel like quitting then. It was freedom. I was free to pursue what I'd always wanted, to pursue my dream of having a shop and a business in interior design. I was free to explore my own creativity, free to make the leap, and then to begin to build that net because I wasn't gonna plan on that net just appearing. I have learned that you really do create your best work from doing something you love. So if you have a dream, write it down. Become the person you believe you can be and never quit trying. I made that leap in 1985 and never looked back. But after 10 years, I decided to close my store. People were puzzled as to why it had been a very successful shop and everyone knew that I loved it. But we were a family in crisis. My brother Ed was very ill. He also had four small children. I needed some time for myself and for my family. I continued on with the decorating, but something had to give. Life needed a recalibration, so the shop had to go. My brother Ed was a Marine, but his war was leukemia. He never gave up quitting because that's not what makes a Marine. Ed inspired me. He never quit believing he could beat it. We had so much in common. He was my brother, but also a soulmate. We used to laugh that we shared a very, very special gene. It was one that responded to the gravitational pull of used bookstores. Because wherever we went, he usually had an itinerary of every bookstore that we had to visit. When he was at Texas A&M, in his letters, he would type quotes and send them to me in the mail. Some of them live in my journals today. When Ed needed a bone marrow transplant, I was the match, his donor. I guess it was the book gene, the thing that connected us. We lost Ed, but his don't quit spirit is with us every day. And then came 2020, a thing called COVID. Our lives changed abruptly and forever. Yet COVID was the catalyst to my latest leap. 
Like you, I watched the news and saw the lines at food pantries. I heard the statistics about job losses and homelessness. But those statistics were people. Then the words of John Lewis echoed, if you see something, do something. So a little background on the inspiration of my latest leap. Years ago, I obtained a copy of a book called The Book of the Homeless, edited by Edith Wharton in 1916. It was a fundraising effort that she initiated to help refugees and children in World War I. It was Edith's idea to create a volume by approaching artists, writers, and um, poets to contribute to this book and to contribute an original piece. At the time, Edith had written nine novels and would go on to become the first female Pulitzer Prize winner in 1921. But while living in France during World War I, Wharton abandoned all of her writing. She opened workshops for women who lost their jobs. She founded American hostels sheltering 4,500 Belgian and French refugees, and she established the Children of Flanders Rescue Committee to take care of 1,000 children. Teddy Roosevelt wrote the foreword to Wharton's book. Henry James, Thomas Hardy, Stravinsky, John Singer Sargent were among some of the contributors. So one night at dinner, I told my husband, I needed to do something. I needed to recreate Wharton's book. And then he said, then you must. So with a small group of friends, we called on other friends and prayed that they would answer our pleas. That was quite a leap. Darren Walker, president and CEO of the Ford Foundation, agreed to write the foreword. And at that point, we began to build our own net. Over the summer, 125 people answered our call to write a poem, do a watercolor or a drawing, something that said home to them. Drew Barrymore, Bette Midler, John Grisham, Al Roker, Clarissa Ward, Joyce Carol Oates, Bianca Jagger, and John Meacham all contributed to Home, a fundraiser for No Kid Hungry, whose mission it is to end childhood hunger, a plague that affects 13 million children in our country each and every day. Our contributors donated their writing and their art. All the profits go to No Kid Hungry. Published last October by Rizzoli, we are now in our third printing. So graduating and now going to work, remember, it's not just about making a living, it's about making a life. A life that is principled and with purpose. A life that includes sacrifice and being of service to others. My work in the not-for-profit world is as important to me as my career. Mentoring veterans, raising money for bone marrow recipients, medical research, and childhood hunger. I feel this is some of the most important work that I could ever do in my life. Of course I love design. I love creating big, beautiful homes for others. But even what you love has its limits. The gratification derived from making someone else's life better, safer, healthier. Well, there's nothing more rewarding to me. So in your life, I hope you find a cause that pulls at your heartstrings and you will give it all that you can. There is one thing in life I am absolutely certain about, and that is what will define you, what will define you in your life. And it is right here, your heart. You will be defined by how you treat people, your compassion, your tolerance, your open-mindedness, your willingness to listen and observe, and not only to expand your own views, but in order to understand the other side. In the words of Martin Luther King, you will be judged by the content of your character. Thank you for this honor to stand here with a microphone today to address the thousands of you present and those virtually on this very special occasion in your life and that of your families. And just for the chance to wear this terribly unchic, voluminous robe, which has to be a great design opportunity for somebody. <laughs> but seriously, just for the chance to share my poem and the proverb and a few things reflected in the rearview mirror of my life thus far. 
Promise me, promise yourself that you will resolve to always keep going because there's another proverb that says, it doesn't matter how slowly you go as long as you do not stop. Tom Brady thought he wanted to stop and then he had a big uh-uh moment. And that didn't take very long either, did it? He said, I wanna go until the end because I don't wanna get there and realize, man, I could still do it. Look at the Rolling Stones, look at Rod Stewart, Bruce Springsteen and Paul McCartney. The list rocks on and they're not about to quit anytime soon either. Yes. Sorry. Okay, we're gonna get there. It's coming. Sorry I didn't memorize the whole thing even though I had three years. Anyway. <laughs> Class of 2022, the world needs you. The world needs your talent and your energy. It needs your youthful enthusiasm and your wild imagination. It needs your intelligence and your grace. It needs your defiance and your don't quit spirit. And it needs your mistakes and your failures. Those knee scraping, character building moments that make you stronger and resolve to get up and carry on. As a Jap Japanese proverb proclaims, fall down seven times, get up eight. The world needs you to create a better place, a place so great we can't even imagine it. And now you have the tools to do it. I love what Phil Knight, founder of Nike said when David Rubenstein asked him why he always wears sunglasses. He said, the future is so bright, I wear them all the time. You class of 2022, you are the future. You now have built yourself a platform, one that I know you will inevitably leap from many times in your long life ahead. So start building your nets, and for God's sakes, promise me that you will never, ever quit. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, Charlotte. So each year we offer special recognition to people who enhance VCU and the quality of the lives of people in our communities. And so today we're gonna to begin with the presentation of the doctor of, uh, the, the honorary doctor of humane letters, which is VCU's highest uh, recognition in this category. This year we're very proud to present our commencement speaker uh, with this award, Charlotte Moss, Rector Dendy, um, if you would just stand here with Charlotte. And I will also ask our provost to come forward and give us a couple of sentences about Charlotte and why we are doing this. Thank you, President Rao. Charlotte Moss, as a recognized interior designer, author, and philanthropist, you have garnered the respect and admiration of your peers and the communities you have served. Your award-winning work as a designer has served as a platform by which you have educated us and given back to many causes that impact our country now and in the future. President Rao. Charlotte. In recognition of your great achievements by the authority vested in me by VCU's Board of Visitors, I hereby confer upon you the degree Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa, with all of the rights, privileges, and emoluments thereunto pertaining.
And now it's time to present the Edward Wayne Medal, which is one that honors people who have made just truly outstanding contributions or provided exemplary service to Virginia Commonwealth University. So this year's Edward Wayne Medal goes to Dr. Michelle and Don Romano. Rector Dendy, if you would kindly escort the Romanos both here to the podium. And Michelle and Don Romano, your commitment to VCU is unwavering and evident through your philanthropy and support. Your decades of remarkable service to the university will continue to enrich and inspire our students, faculty, patients, and programs for years to come. We are forever grateful. President Rao. Thank you, Provost Sotaropoulos. Michelle and Don, in recognition of your extraordinary philanthropy and leadership, and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Visitors of Virginia Commonwealth University, I hereby present to each one of you the Edward Wayne Medals. Thank you so much for all that you have done for VCU. Thank you, congratulations. Our final award this morning is the Board of Visitors Award, which recognizes a student who has outstanding academic achievement, leadership, and has provided service to the university and to the communities that we are a part of throughout the Commonwealth or even beyond. I am very proud to announce that this year's Board of Visitors Award goes to Laura Chioma Jones. Rector Dendy, please again, would you kindly forward Laura Choma? Well, that wasn't very hard. Okay. Laura Chioma Jones. T, as you're known among your friends and family. Your high academic, academic achievement, strong leadership, and compassionate service have set you on a path to success and have positively influenced your peers. You exemplify the very best VCU has to offer. President Rao. Laura Chioma, in recognition of your grand achievements as a student, by the authority vested in me by the Virginia Commonwealth University Board of Visitors, I hereby present you with the 2022 Board of Visitors Award. So congratulations to all of our honorees. And now we'll move on to presenting our candidates for all of their degrees, something you've all been waiting for, I know. So I'm going to start out by asking Graduate School Dean Dan Bullard if he will come forward and help me with presenting our candidates for the degree Doctor of Philosophy. Dan? Will the candidates for the degree Doctor of Philosophy in all disciplines please rise? Mr. President, as Dean of the Graduate School, it gives me great pleasure to present these students who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by the faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, and upon the recommendation of each of your faculties, I am very pleased to confer upon each one of you the degree Doctor of Philosophy.
And now, with this grand achievement, lifetime achievement that each of these graduates at, at this level have made, we are going to do something called the hooding process, and they will come through the stage. Dean Bullard. The candidate's major advisors will join me in the hooding of the PhD graduates. The president will be joined by Rector Dendy in congratulating the graduates. Computer Science, Amy Olex, accompanied by Dr. Bridget McKinnis. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy and Computer Science, Darshini Mahindran, accompanied by Dr. Bridget McKinnis. Doctor of Philosophy and Computer Science, Hanadrin Barul Pasini, accompanied by Dr. Tamir Nadim. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy and Mechanical and Nuclear Engineering, Zan Xu, accompanied by Dr. Wei Ning Wang. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy and Chemistry, Yanani Christopher, accompanied by Dr. Jeffrey Wilson. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy and Counseling Psychology, Brad Pierce, accompanied by Dr. Jeffrey Wilson. Doctor of Philosophy and Psychology, Maria de Jesus Cisnero Elias, accompanied by Dr. Chelsea Williams. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy and Counseling Psychology, Aaron Delaney, accompanied by Dr. Chelsea Williams. Doctor of Philosophy and Psychology, Chloe Walker, accompanied by Dr. Chelsea Williams. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy and Media Art and Text, Harry Alexander Jones IV, accompanied by Dr. Jeffrey Wilson. Doctor of Philosophy and Nanoscience, Rachel Barberi, accompanied by Dr. Indika Arichie. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy and Nanoscience and Nanotechnology, Madhavi Gamiri, accompanied by Dr. Joseph Rainier. Doctor of Philosophy and Media Art and Text, Ahmed Alkarni, accompanied by Dr. Marcus Mesner. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy and Systems Modeling and Anna, Dr. Uh, Maurice Brown, accompanied by Dr. Paul Brooks. Doctor of Philosophy in Clinical and Translational Science, Tia Turner, accompanied by Dr. J. Chuck Harrell. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Business, Ranampik Kaur Senhu, accompanied by Dr. Brian Brown. Doctor of Philosophy in Education, Marquita C., accompanied by Dr. Christine Bay. Everybody. 
Doctor of Philosophy and Education, Kendra Johnson, accompanied by Dr. Hilary Parkhouse. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy and Education, Joyce Washington, accompanied by Dr. Valerie Robnaut. Doctor of Philosophy and Education, Julie Dawkins, accompanied by Dr. Valerie Rapnold. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy and Education, Shanita Williams, accompanied by Dr. Cheryl Shakeshaw. Doctor of Philosophy and Education, Jacqueline Johnson Wilson, accompanied by Dr. Jeffrey Wilson. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy and Education, Michelle Thompson, accompanied by Yao Ying Zhu. Doctor of Philosophy and Ep Epidemiology, Deshonda Taylor, Dr. Derek Chapman Company. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy and Epidemiology, Whitney Graves, accompanied by Dr. Juan Wu. Doctor of Philosophy and Epidemiology, James Clifford, accompanied by Dr. Elizabeth Palm Warmly. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy and Microbiology and Immunology, Amin Omorain, accompanied by Dr. Michael McVoy. Doctor of Philosophy in Social and Behavioral Sciences, Jean Reddy, accompanied by Dr. Jessica LaRose. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Social and Behavioral Sciences, April Williams, accompanied by Dr. Maria Thompson. Doctor of Philosophy in Nursing, Rachel Wood, accompanied by Dr. Suzanne Amaringo. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Nursing, Tracy Prophet, accompanied by Dr. Suzanne Amaringo. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Nursing, Melissa Dollings, accompanied by Dr. Lisa Brown. Doctor of Philosophy and Pharmaceutical Sciences, Haley Mulder, accompanied by Dr. Matthew Halquist. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy and Pharmaceutical Sciences, Dina Amorandani, accompanied by Dr. Martin Salford. Doctor of Philosophy and Pharmaceutical Sciences, Reina Al-Hashimi, accompanied by Dr. Martin Salford. Thank you. 
are PhD graduates of Virginia Commonwealth University. <laughs> As many of my colleagues came through with their students for the hooding, I said something to them that I need to say to all of my faculty colleagues, which is, none of this happens without you. That's never lost on any of us. We continue to have it, to, for it to be our privilege and honor to support all of you as you do what you do to help make it possible for our students to then change the lives of so many people in the world. So faculty, my faculty colleagues, thank you so very, very much. I even said to one faculty colleague who is truly doing life-saving research, life-saving research, thank you for all the lives that you will save and continue to save. He already is saving lives. Now, let's move on to the School of Education Dean, Andrew Dare, and I'll ask him to come forward so that we can present our candidates for the degree of Doctor of Education. Andrew? Will the candidates for the Doctor of Education degree please rise, and the School of Education please rise. Um, so now I have been presented with all of you, the candidates for the degree Doctor of Education, and by the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia and the Board of Visitors, upon the recommendation of your faculty in the School of Education, it is my pleasure to confer upon each one of you the degree Doctor of Education. So the EDD graduates will be joined by their will be joined by Dean Bullard and we will do the hooding of the EDD graduates. So EDD graduates, please come forward so that we may hood you. Andrea Baker, accompanied by Dr. Jonathan Baker. <laughs> Doctor of Education and Leadership, Carlton Harry Good, accompanied by Dr. Jonathan Becker. Doctor of Education and Leadership, Jennifer Sharice Rivers, accompanied by Dr. Jonathan Becker. <laughs> Doctor of Education and Leadership, Melissa Walker Tyler, accompanied by Dr. Jonathan Becker. Doctor of Education and Leadership, Lisa Cooper, accompanied by Dr. Kimberly Bridges. <laughs> Doctor of Education and Leadership, Larry Frazier, accompanied by Dr. Kimberly Bridges. Doctor of Education and Leadership, Ian Kukis, accompanied by Dr. Kimberly Bridges. <laughs> Doctor of Education and Leadership, Andreen Quall Smith, accompanied by Dr. Kimberly Bridges. Doctor of Education and Leadership, Ellen Burnett, accompanied by Dr. Kimberly Bridges. <laughs> Dr. 
Doctor of Education and Leadership, Margot Zarnier, accompanied by Dr. Kimberly Bridges. <laughs> Doctor of Education and Leadership, Judy Anderson, accompanied by Dr. Kimberly Bridges. <laughs> Doctor of Education and Leadership, Renee Oniker, accompanied by Dr. Kimberly Bridges. Doctor of Education and Leadership, Carol Walsh, accompanied by Dr. Kimberly Bridges. <laughs> Doctor of Education and Leadership, Elizabeth Sanders, accompanied by Dr. Kimberly Bridges. <laughs> Doctor of Education and Leadership, Aaron Sturges, accompanied by Dr. Kimberly Bridges. Doctor of Education and Leadership, Kate Pushjack, accompanied by Dr. Kimberly Bridges. <laughs> Doctor of Education and Leadership, Maggie Hartley, accompanied by Dr. Kimberly Bridges. <laughs> Doctor of Education and Leadership, Julie Ellis, accompanied by Dr. Kimberly Bridges. Doctor of Education and Leadership, Teresa O'Day, accompanied by Dr. Kimberly Bridges. <laughs> Doctor of Education and Leadership, Brittany Grasick, accompanied by Dr. Kimberly Bridges. <laughs> Doctor of Education and Leadership, Rochelle Jordan, accompanied by Dr. Kimberly Bridges. Doctor of Education and Leadership, Jennifer Dawn Adams, accompanied by Dr. Kimberly Bridges. <laughs> Doctor of Education and Leadership, Frederico Yvonne Tugas, accompanied by Dr. Tamika Ferguson. <laughs> Doctor of Education and Leadership, Kevin Caffrey, accompanied by Dr. Tamika Ferguson. Doctor of Education and Leadership, Ricardo Claudin Cross, accompanied by Dr. Tamika Ferguson. Once again, congratulations to our Doctor of Education graduates. And I will, yes, please. And I will now ask Dean Bullard if he will kind of, kindly come forward again and present candidates for their master's degrees and post baccalaureate certificates. Dan? Will the master's degree candidates for all majors in the following schools and offices please rise and be recognized in person? College of Engineering, College of Health Professions, College of Humanities and Sciences, School of the Arts, School of Business, School of Dentistry, School of Education, L. Douglas Wilder School of Government and Public Affairs, School of Medicine, School of Nursing, School of Pharmacy, School of Social Work, VCU Life Sciences, VCU Da Vinci Center, and VCU Office of Research. Will Will the candidates for all post-baccalaureate graduate certificates and post-master certificates in all disciplines please rise? Mr. President, as Dean of the Graduate School, it gives me pleasure to present these students who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by the graduate faculty. Great. And could the master's students all please rise again? Thank you.
Very good. Also post-baccalaureate student, certificate students. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors of VCU, and upon the recommendation of each of your faculties, it is sincerely my pleasure to confer upon each one of you your master's degrees and post-baccalaureate certificates. Congratulations. Now at this time, you may be seated. Thank you so much. At this time, School of Dentistry Dean Lyndon Cooper will come forward and present the candidates for the degree Doctor of Dental Surgery. <laughs> will the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Dental Surgery please rise? <laughs> Mr. President, as Dean of the School of Dentistry, it gives me pleasure to present these students who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by the faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, upon the recommendation of the faculty in dentistry, it is my pleasure to confer upon each one of you the degree Doctor of Dental Surgery. Congratulations. I now ask our Dean in the School of Medicine, David Chelmo, serving as interim, if he will come forward and present our candidates for the degree Doctor of Medicine, which was the first degree at Virginia Commonwealth University. Will the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Medicine please rise? Mr. President, as Interim Dean of the School of Medicine, it gives me pleasure to present these students who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by the faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, and upon the recommendation of our faculty in medicine, I am pleased to confer upon you and the other 200 graduates <laughs> with a degree who aren't here for some reason, um, the degree Doctor of Medicine. <laughs> and now, School of Pharmacy Dean Joe DePiro will come forward and present candidates for the degree Doctor of Pharmacy. Will the candidates for the Doctor of Pharmacy degree please rise? <laughs> President Rao, as Dean of the School of Pharmacy, it gives me pleasure to present these students who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by the faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, upon the recommendation of our pharmacy faculty, it is my pleasure to confer upon each one of you the degree Doctor of Pharmacy. Thank you. And now at this time, I'm going to ask VCU Honors College Dean uh, Scott Bruninger if he will come forward and recognize our students who are graduating today with Latin and University Honors. In accordance with university tradition, those bachelor degree holders who have done exceptionally well academically and have completed a minimum of 45 credits at VCU are recognized with Latin honors. All students with a grade point average between 3.3 and 3.59 on a scale of 4.0 are graduating cum laude, which signifies graduation with academic distinction. Will these students please rise? Okay. Okay. Uh, would you please be seated? <laughs> okay. 
all students with a grade point average between 3.6 and 3.89 are graduating magna cum laude, which signifies graduation with high academic distinction. Will these students please rise? And all students with a grade point average of 3.9 or higher are graduating summa cum laude, which signifies graduation with the highest academic distinction. Will these students please rise? Thank you. And congratulations to you all. I would also like to recognize all the bachelor's degree candidates who, in addition to earning Latin honors, have completed the rigorous requirements of Virginia Commonwealth University's Honors College and will graduate today with university honors. Would you please stand? Congratulations on your exceptional achievement. Thank you very much. So now we'll move on to award our baccalaureate degrees and certificates. And I will ask College of Engineering Dean Barbara Boyan to kindly come forward and take her time because I want to take the moment, this moment to thank her for an incredible run as one of the most, one of the fastest and most powerful deans that we have had in terms of transforming a college to the level that we enjoy today. Thank you so much, Barbara, for your lifetime of dedication, giving us your very, very best years to make the College of Engineering what it is today. <laughs> I was wondering why I was sitting on the front row, Michael. That was <laughs> OK, guys, get ready. Will the candidates for all bachelor's degrees baccalaureate certificates and post-baccalaureate undergraduate certificates in the very best College of Engineering at Virginia Commonwealth University, please rise. <laughs> Mr. President, as Dean of the College of Engineering, it gives me great pleasure to present these students who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by their very wonderful faculty. Thank you. Thank you. And you may still continue to rise, please, engineering graduates, because by the virtue of the authority vested in me, by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, and upon the recommendation of our engineering faculty, it is my pleasure to confer upon each one of you your baccalaureate degrees and certificates in engineering. Thank you. I now ask College of Health Professions Dean Susan Parrish if she will please come forward. Good afternoon. Will the candidates for all bachelors of science degrees in the College of Health Professions please rise? <laughs> President Rao, as Dean of the College of Health Professions, it is my pleasure and privilege to present these amazing healthcare professionals who have fulfilled all requirements and are wildly and enthusiastically welcomed into their professions by my esteemed faculty colleagues. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, upon the recommendation of each of your faculties in health professions, it is my pleasure to confer upon each one of you your baccalaureate degrees. Congratulations. <laughs> And now I will ask College of Humanities and Sciences Dean Jennifer Mallett to please come forward to the podium. And as she does, 
I also want to thank her for her great service to Virginia Commonwealth University in the largest college of the institution and wish you all the very best as you pursue all of the great successful things that are coming your way in your great future. All right, thank you. Will the candidates for all bachelor's degrees, baccalaureate certificates, and post-baccalaureate undergraduate certificates in the biggest and best college at VCU, the College of Humanities and Sciences, please rise. <laughs> Mr. President, as Dean of the College of Humanities and Sciences, it gives me great pleasure to present these students who have fulfilled all of the requirements and are recommended by the faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, upon the recommendation of your faculties within the College of Humanities and Sciences, it is my sincere pleasure to confer upon each one of you, all of you, your tremendous energy is wonderful. Each one of you, your <laughs> baccalaureate degrees and certificates. And now I will ask Dean of the School of the Arts, Carmenita Higginbotham, to please come forward to the podium. Will the candidates for all bachelor's degrees and baccalaureate certificates in the amazing School of the Arts please rise. <laughs> Mr. President, as Dean of the School of the Arts, it gives me great pleasure to present these students artists, designers, performers, and scholars who have fulfilled all requirements are, and are recommended by our amazing faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, upon the recommendation of our faculty in the School of the Arts, I am pleased to confer upon each one of you your baccalaureate degrees and certificates. going to be changing with some of our graduates there for sure. I now ask Interim Dean of the School of Business, Doug Pugh, to please come forward. Will the candidates for all bachelor's degrees, baccalaureate certificates, and post-baccalaureate undergraduate certificates in the School of Business please rise? Mr. President, as Interim Dean of the School of Business, it gives me great pleasure to present these future business leaders for the city of Richmond, the state of Virginia, and beyond, who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by the faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, upon the recommendation of your faculties within business, I am pleased to confer upon each one of you your baccalaureate degrees and certificates. Congratulations. And now I will ask School of Dentistry Dean Lyndon Cooper if he will kindly return to the podium. Will the candidates for all bachelor's degree in dental hygiene in the School of Dentistry please rise. <laughs> Mr. President, as the Dean of the School of Dentistry, it gives me great pleasure to present these students who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by the faculty. Thank you, and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, and upon the recommendation of your faculty, it is my pleasure to confer upon each one of you your baccalaureate degrees.
And now I ask L. Douglas Wilder School of Government and Public Affairs Dean Susan Gooden to please come forward to present more candidates for their graduation. Will the candidates for all bachelor's degrees in the L. Douglas Wilder School of Government and Public Affairs please rise. <laughs> Mr. President, as Dean of the number one ranked public affairs school in the Commonwealth of Virginia, the L. Douglas Wilder School of Government and Public Affairs, it gives me tremendous pleasure to present these outstanding students who have fulfilled all academic requirements and are recommended by our faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, upon the recommendation of your faculty, I am pleased to confer upon each one of you your bachelor's degrees. And now I ask Dean, uh, Dean Jean Gooden, Giddens of the School of Nursing to please come forward. Will the candidates for all bachelor's degrees in the School of Nursing please rise? Mr. President, as Dean of the School of Nursing, it gives me great pleasure to present these students who are well prepared to enter the nursing workforce at a time we need you most and have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by the faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, Board of Visitors, and upon the recommendation of our nursing faculty, I am pleased to confer upon each one of you your baccalaureate degrees. And now I ask School of Social Work Dean Beth Angel if she will kindly come forward to the podium. Will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Social Work please rise. Mr. President, as Dean of the number one ranked School of Social Work in the Commonwealth of Virginia, it gives me great pleasure to present these future change agents who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by our outstanding faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, upon the recommendation of our social work faculty, I am pleased to confer upon each one of you your bachelor's degrees. Congratulations. And now I ask University College Dean Constance Relihan if she would kindly come forward. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Interdisciplinary Studies in University College please rise? <laughs> Mr. President, as Dean of University College, it gives me great pleasure to present these students who have fulfilled all degree requirements and are recommended by their faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, and upon the recommendation of your faculty, I am very pleased to confer upon each one of you your degree, Bachelor of Inter Interdisciplinary Studies. And now I ask Life Sciences Vice Provost Rob Toombs to please come forward to present additional graduates. Thank you, President Rao. Will the candidates for all bachelor's degrees and baccalaureate certificates in life sciences please rise? <laughs> Mr. President, as Vice Provost for Life Sciences, it gives me great pleasure to present these earth-saving students who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by their faculty. 
and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, upon the recommendation of your faculty in life sciences, it's my pleasure to confer upon each one of you your bachelor's degrees. Congratulations. And now I am going to ask Michelle Peace, our VCU Alumni Council Chair, to share some final remarks since you are now alumni of Virginia Commonwealth University. I, I am keenly aware that I am between you and lunch. <laughs> um, but I will beg your grace just for a minute. I think a lot about one VCU. I think about all of the potential for each of you. I am a first generation college graduate. I think about my career. I think about my life here at VCU. I think about the fact that I received my PhD, I earned my PhD from the VCU School of Medicine. I'm now a faculty member in the College of Humanities and Sciences in the Department of Forensic Science. I think about that career path and that that could have only happened at VCU. I think about the fact, sorry, I asked for grace. When I was a young faculty member, I'd had a career someplace else, I came back to VCU. And one of my first undergraduate students came to me with a question. I really don't like what my current major is, but I don't want to stay another year to finish my bachelor's degree. And I told her, stay, stay one more year, do what your heart tells you to do, because that's where your passion is, that's where your future is. Stay one more year, I'll talk to your parents, and I'll make it worth your time. Just a few minutes ago, she crossed the stage with her PhD. I kid you not, her career path will have only been made possible because of VCU, because there is no other place for her to do what she did here and then what she is about to go do. VCU, one VCU, she left the college, she went to the medical campus. That could have only happened at VCU. There are extraordinary things in front of you. Commencement celebrates the completion of time filled with things. Those things cast bright lights into your futures. Those things are made of late nights, questionable food, roommates with strange habits, laughing, work, more work, a lot of hard work, work that shaped and reshaped you, challenged you, scared you, inspired you, broke you, enraged you, and motivated you. Your work has been our work. Your lives have also been touched by strangers. Some showed you a path, some guided you down a path, some cheered as you ran down a path. Some strangers became entrusted and close friends, some remained acquaintances, some became teachers and mentors. They all help you find meaning in the work on your path. Your path is our path. The day of commencement has always been an extraordinary day, but today marks a different kind of extraordinary, a new extraordinary. You have been challenged and adapted and thrived in exceptional circumstances. Because you have been resilient and tenacious, you found new ways to thrive. Your thriving is our thriving. I encourage you to be that stranger to a student to encourage, 
and champion and show them a path. I encourage you to reach out to your teachers and your mentors so that we can celebrate your accomplishments with you. Be a resource, a talent, a trusted friend, a challenger in this community. Encourage us to be more and be better. Show others how to thrive in extraordinary circumstances because you were, you are, and you did. In the end, we work together on a path so that our community thrives. Thriving is a human element. It takes work and strangers coming together, working in brokenness and through challenges, inspired and motivated. Trusting that we find meaning and hope and a bright future in the community thriving. Your community is our community. Today I welcome you into your new future as an alum of Virginia Commonwealth University. Your future is our future. And because of you, our future is exceptionally bright. Only a few years ago, we welcomed you to campus by saying, welcome to the Ramily. My colleague, you are my resource. You are now my friend. I'm going to tap you because we have work to do at Virginia Commonwealth University. Today, I say congratulations, my Ramily. <laughs> President Rao, I believe the end marks you. So before we move to the final portion of the ceremony today, there are some very important people who have supported our graduates through the years and have made this day possible. And we have, we must acknowledge them. Would the parents of our graduates please rise and be recognized? Would the spouses, partners, and significant others of our graduates please rise and be recognized? Would the, ch would the children of our graduates please rise and be recognized? And would all the other relatives and friends who have supported our graduates, please rise and be recognized. <clears throat> Thank you. And now to recognize and present our graduates, President Rao. Thank you all so much for coming out for, to celebrate this momentous occasion. It's now my pleasure to officially welcome you as VCU's newest alumni. So there's this great tradition for new graduates to move the tassels from the right side of their mortar boards to the left side. I ask you to do that. Congratulations to VCU's class of 2022! thought you'd like those balloons. We were right. Okay, so this now brings our commencement ceremony to a close, and we ask that you allow the platform party to exit, and graduates will follow. Thank you, and congratulations to everyone!